What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the fighting game tutorial series, we are going to be going over server travel. So server travel is the idea of changing levels in a multiplayer game. The server, the host, will change and travel to that level, but the clients can come as well. You can do both absolute and seamless traveling this way. I'm going to come into the game here, hosting two sessions, two standalone sessions, and I'm going to go online, host on the first one, online join on the second one, just like we've done all of our multiplayer to this point. Once I've joined the session on the client, we see all the logs there, I'm going to go back to the first window and select confirm on host again. So if you've been following the series, the way we were previously ending the hosted session, we're going to do that again. Now we have a log printing on the screen that says testing server travel. And this time it's going to be our server travel. So you can actually see player one is able to control the mannequin. The materials are wrong. We don't have our HUD and things like that. But the character was able to be controlled by the server, by the player. And then you see player two over here, the client, the second window, is loading into the proper map. This is because the server and the client joined in. They're in the same session. And then we traveled them both to the same level. This is excellent news. Although it looks broken right now, it's because our client has no character to possess. So right now they're kind of just under the map in this weird state. Once we know that we can get the server and the client into the state, we can go on to actually making the server and the client possess the proper characters and then actually go on to play the game. We're gonna do this today by using a listen server. So once we open that up, clients will be able to join and we will be able to achieve the result that we see on the screen here. Even though a lot of this logic in this episode may be temporary, it's really only that way because we don't have all the pieces in place so far. We will be using all of it, just not necessarily where it's at. That's why I'm calling it temporary. So that's what we're going to be covering today. If you guys are interested in getting caught up in the series so you can see how we've done all of our other mechanics in our game, such as versus mode, practice mode, hitboxes, different types of attacks, it's all in this playlist in the top right corner. Currently, there are over 240 episodes in this series. Alternatively, if you only care about the online portions of this tutorial, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to watch everything to follow along with this episode, but I do recommend you watch the online episodes that came before it because they are all building on top of each other. I'll link you to the first episode of Online Play where we went over creating and hosting an online session. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. This is a code and blueprint tutorial series. Everything is going to be done in the code today. We are going to use blueprints to test one thing, but it's only going to be temporary. So let's start in the code. We'll go to Visual Studio to do that. So first thing we want to do is go to our base game instance.cpp. So base game instance is where we've been doing all of our online play. We want to scroll down to a function that we created recently when we were covering client travel. So client travel allows a client, so someone who's not the host, to travel to an IP address and connect to another session using a connection string. So if we scroll down to travel to session, this function that we made, we were calling client travel in here, passing in connection info. When we went over this function, I commented on the fact that you could print out your connection info to the screen. It has your IP address and it can have other things like ports and platform information as well. I did not print it out because if you print out your IP address publicly, then people can use that. So of course I was not sharing that with everyone. So if you're interested in following up on what I mentioned in that episode, you can use these. Just make sure you don't share them with anyone. They're commented out right now, but the reason this is useful is because I wasn't able to successfully server travel when I initially tried. And so my first thought was to make sure that my IP address was correct. And this is because client travel takes in your URL, which is typically just an IP address. But in my case, when I was using this top function here, get resolved connect string, which was returning the connection string into this connection info variable that we made. It had the IP address and the port number. The port number does not need to be in the connection info. A port number of zero is an invalid port. This is a common issue when running standalone games from Unreal Engine and even launching it through Visual Studio, which I always recommend people launch Unreal through Visual Studio. That can cause issues with the port as well, but don't worry too much about it. This is something I will be covering and we can talk about ports later. Right now we're just gonna strip out the port and that will be perfectly valid for what we need to do with online multiplayer. And so we wanna strip out the port number. 
So after we get our connection info filled out here, I'm doing an additional line to remove that port number. So print out your connection info using this log right here. Make sure that yours matches mine because yours could be different. You might not need to do this step. For me, I have to remove the port number from the connection string, which is leaving only the IP address. Again, I'm not gonna show what that is. Then I had a colon. A single colon in your connection string represents the port number. So you're gonna see IP address, colon, port number. Now, this is an F string, so we can simply just remove the characters that we don't want to use right now. So we have connection info dot remove at, and this takes in an index that we want to remove, and then the count, so the number of elements to remove. Now, we have a way to find the given index in a string that a certain character is. A colon like this will only ever be found prior to the port number, so we just need to find the colon in the string, and if we find it, we want to remove that element. And I'm going to remove two of them because my port was just a single number, zero, so I don't have to remove more than one character. So I want to remove the colon and then the character after it, which is the actual port number. So I'm removing at connection info dot find, and in quotes I put the colon, and then I put a comma, and there's my two characters that I'm removing. If the port number isn't found, the find will return negative one. If negative one is found, you're not going to be able to remove at that index. So it's gonna try and remove at negative one and fail, which is perfectly fine actually, because nothing will be removed and your connection info string will remain whole. After that, everything else in here can remain the same for today's episode. But we wanna make sure we get that right because traveling the client is important to be able to connect to the server. Yes, you can do server travel like we're gonna do in today's episode to move servers and clients, but the client has to be connected to the server one way or another before we can treat them together. Once the client is properly connected with that update, we can go ahead and call server travel. We have to define how we want to actually trigger server travel in here. In our actual game, what we will likely do is once a match is found, we will automatically initiate server travel. If we have a lobby and we have both characters confirming that they're ready, we would initiate server travel at that point and we will go to the character select menu. Really, there's unlimited ways to do it, but those are some of the ways that we might do it in our series. But for now, and for this demonstration, what I'm doing is once I hit the host button on the main menu, and I already have a session created, at that point, I wanna call server travel. This is strictly temporary, but we need a way to test it today to make sure everything's working before we get into more complicated stuff because a lot of the server travel stuff, especially with the level streaming and all that, is going to be more complicated than this. We just wanna be able to test it, make sure this works before going any farther. Let's scroll down to our host session function. In here, we had this if statement where we were checking to see if we could create a session. If the session failed to be created immediately, meaning something was found that would stop our session from being created, such as if there is already a session with this exact name, we would go into this else statement. And in here, we were actually ending the session. As of the last episode, we were ending the session because instead of getting us stuck in this loop where we couldn't actually host another session because we already hosted one, we were deciding to end it. That way we could host another. This logic is fine to stay in here for now. I wanna test the server travel stuff in here right now. And we'll be ripping this out in the next episode and moving it to where it really should be. We just don't have that function yet. And it's a little much to pack into this one episode. So bear with me, right now I have my logs for ending a session as well as my end session function call commented out. Don't delete them, we're going to add them back in here, but we want to keep them commented out for now so that they are not ending the session while we're trying to do server travel. Instead we're going to add this behavior in here. So I have another set of logs, I have my gengine add on screen debug message at index 0, it's up for 30 seconds, color of cyan, and it's printing testing server travel. Then I have a UE log, log temp, warning, with the same text. So this will allow us to test and make sure that this logic is being hit, and it's going to say testing server travel. After that is the important line in this section, though, which is get world server travel. First thing we need is just get world, just get the current world, and then we need to call server travel. Now, server travel takes in three parameters. First one, URL, is the important one, the name of a level. For me, I just chose a name of a level that I wanted to travel to. So I happen to choose Trail of the Wise. You're going to want the name of a level that is in your game. You could use the side scroller example map or any other maps that you have. The exact name of the level. Then I've added this section 
Question mark, listen. This opens a listen server. If the game is standalone and there's no listen server, then nobody can join the game. So we need to append the listen parameter to our URL here to make sure we open that listen server. This is all in quotes. This is the URL. So once we have this, this is where we're traveling to. The other two parameters are absolute and should skip game notify. Absolute means whether we're doing absolute or seamless traveling. So we'll go more into that in the future multiplayer episodes. Just be aware, that means that's going to override. Even if we're in seamless travel, we will do an absolute travel if this is true. I'm going to keep this as false. And for the other Boolean, the should skip game notify, that is to determine if we should notify clients that we're traveling or not. So if you just want to travel the server and leave the clients where they are, you could set that as true. Otherwise, we want it to be false that the clients are notified. And in this case, we definitely do want to notify the clients because we want to take them with us to the new level. As the comment says here, if the session already exists, server travel to trail the wise as a test. Now there's something else I want to do in here, and that's in our base player controller.cpp. This is another temporary thing, and this is going to allow us to see the level right away. So when we're traveling, we still have widgets on the screen. Server travel does not automatically clear out those widgets. This is also temporary. To demonstrate this to you today, you need to be able to clear those widgets off your screen. In my opinion, this is by far the easiest. So if we just include this header file at the top of our base player controller.cpp, I have include runtime umg public blueprint widget layout library.h. This file gives us access to the u widget layout library. This class has a function called remove all widgets. Remove all widgets does exactly what it sounds like. It removes all widgets off the screen. Now the reason I'm doing this in the player controller is because even though we haven't covered this yet, when we server travel, the player controllers that exist are going to be destroyed and new ones are going to be created. This is how Unreal handles it. But since we're in our base player controller, and this is the controller that's being spawned by default, or some child of this is being spawned by default, begin play will be called when the new player controller is created. So once the player controller is created, we will remove all widgets from the screen, which will allow us to see the server travel actually working on the server and client side. Otherwise, your main menu or your session list menu will be up in front of the screen. So very simply, in begin play, I call u widget layout library, colon colon, remove all widgets, and it needs a world context object, which again is just basically anything in this world. It could be the world itself, or in this case, I'm just using this, which represents the base player controller in the world. Now with those things done, we can go ahead and launch the editor. At this point, the editor is back open. We could try our server travel now. If we do that, we will get two of the screens that we saw at the start of this episode that both look like what the client saw. So remember in the server, I could possess the mannequin, but in the client, I just saw the scene while I was kind of stuck under the ground. Both screens would look like that. And that's because our logic currently in the game runs to possess the pawns in our game mode BP. We have this class, default game mode BP, or you might be doing it in your code. But regardless, the game mode blueprint is the one that handles this. And to this point, we have changed the logic to not work off of begin play, but rather when the level gets streamed in because we're using level streaming. However, the level is not being streamed in when we do server travel. We can make this work, don't worry, but again, this is another huge topic, so we're not going to go over that today. We just want to make sure that the server travel works. We don't have to worry about level streaming and all that complicated stuff yet. Since we're just making sure it works, the level streamed in event is not going to be called, and thus we can't actually spawn the characters at the appropriate locations, set up the camera. We can't do any of that stuff that we normally do. Instead, what we want to do is go to begin play and go to the very end of it, and I've connected it to the start node of level streamed in. Let me mention it again. This is completely temporary. We don't want to do this in the long term. But for now, you will be able to see the server actually having some gameplay functionality after the server travel. The client won't be able to see this. This is because the game mode does not exist on the client. So even the begin play event won't run for the client and thus we can't get any of this behavior to work. There are ways to make these things happen so that the client can see everything and get all the necessary data. We're just not there yet. So for now, just connect begin play to this just for proof of concept. Once you see the server actually spawning the characters, putting the camera in, and you can control the mannequin, I recommend going and disabling this connection again because you've finished everything that you need for today's episode. And in the next episode, we'll go over doing some of these temporary things the proper way.
there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but now we're really at a very tangible spot where the two instances are going to be in the same level. So we can start testing things on server and client and see what the other one can see. All this really exciting stuff. If you enjoyed this episode and it helped you learn about server travel and multiplayer connections, then please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do, and I really appreciate that. If you are a Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord subscriber, you will be able to get those templates off the Epic Marketplace for a significantly reduced cost. If you had any issues with today's episode or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out and get you sorted so you can keep working on your game. That's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.